I didn't ask. I didn't call my agent. I said, don't call. Why call? What are you calling for? What are you going to get? What do they know? If they know anything, they'll call you. What do you want to hear? It's over. Forget it. They liked you, but they didn't like you. They weren't crazy about you. One liked you, the others hated you. I mean, <laughs> so I didn't even call. But it was on my mind, obviously, every day, every night. And I had a good support system, so I just kept doing, living my life. And uh, got a call saying, come on mm, Wednesday, that had to be March 5th, take this down. Um, they called on Tuesday, I think, Monday or Tuesday, to say, uh, they want to do a test. Is it a test? <sighs> okay. Where, how, where, what? They said, well, it'll be at uh, NBC Burbank, same place you go to do the Carson show. Said, okay, I know where that is. And uh, at like 7 o'clock. But before you go, call me an hour before you leave because we're, we're negotiating the deal. And I said, Negotiating the deal. Well, yeah, before we do the test, they have to negotiate the deal. I said, oh, that doesn't mean I have the party. Well, no. Oh, okay. You know that it works this way? They get you wrapped up first. So should they decide they want you, that's the deal. Little deal, you know? And, of course, every one of us is like this, saying, oh, well, anything, anything. I'll do it for nothing. I'll do it for nothing, you know? I said, well, whatever, Wally. And I never asked about money, ever except toward the end of the series. And I realized I was being grossly underpaid. Uh, never knew that, actually. Um, but, um, so I said, okay. And oh, wait, 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 wait. No, there was another. They called me on a Monday. To go in to meet Grant Tinker, they said. Okay, yeah, all right. And I said, uh, okay, where? Back at the same place, only it'll be in Bosco's office. And I go there, and I'm sitting outside in the corridor landing with a big window over here. And I'm so relaxed that I, and I'm in a suit this time, a warm suit, and it's summer, it's, well, not summer, it's winter, it's, 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 it's March 3rd. And uh, I'm sort of dozing, and a voice says, hi, excuse me, I'm sorry, and it's Bob Butler, as it turned out. Red-haired, freckled, charming guy, big hands. Sweet guy, tall in person, but I don't know who this person is. And he said, I said, it's a little hard to see you again, backlit. <laughs> He said, well, let me get over here. He said, I, said, I just want to say hello and, and, you know, welcome you. And you were going to get you in here in a minute. And I said, oh, well, thank you. He said, I sort of, I want to, I've been thinking about you. I, you're the, I, you go away to do plays, don't you? And you've been doing something and so on. I said, no. I did tour in Twigs with Michael Bennett directing. And I said, not exactly. I did Shakespeare in the Park here. He said, well, that's the impression, the feeling I get about you, that you, you, you're a really serious actor. And I said, well, are you, what do you do? He said, oh, I'm the director. I said, oh, well, are you a serious director? He said, well, yeah, I like to think so. I said, oh, okay. Oh, well. But I don't have a really clear present. I said, well, that's good. That's fine. I'm, I'm glad. Well, that's fine with me. He said, well, it'll be great. They said, you're terrific. And we're going to, and then I, the door opens and a really good looking guy I'd seen on commercials comes out and they all say, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I hear, I see bodies and he leaves. And I think, oh, He'd be good. He'd be good casting. I don't know that guy's name. Anyway, finally they usher me in. A few minutes later, they open the door, and it's wall-to-wall -wall people up against the wall, a room maybe this big. Bodge goes off, and there's his desk. And some on the floor. Hoblet, I think, was sitting on the floor like this. And he had the script in his hand. And uh, no Grant Tinker. Everybody but Grant Tinker. He was not there. But they said to me later, 
speak as one voice. Whatever he says is what Grant wants too. So you know, they obviously are close and confer. So I sat behind the desk and I'm not nervous. I'm thinking, oh, look at all these people, what's going on here? And so we read a scene. Howlett says, I'm going to read with you again if you don't mind. I said, it's okay. Thank you. They laughed. So we read a scene and they said, anything else? And Howlett would say, anybody? Anything else? And I said, ah, uh, I don't know what the devil made me do it. I said, oh, why did they do that? I said, uh, there's one little moment when Faye comes in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was a casting woman. Forgot her name. Mm, for first casting person. She said, well, I'll, I'll read it. I'll read it. I said, when Faye comes in, in the pilot. Uh, then it became a kind of celebrated moment. Uh, and so she comes. She said, where? When Faye comes in? I said, yeah. So she comes in and says, Frank, where is it? And I looked up and said, hello, Faye. And they laughed out loud. And I thought, stop. I said, thank you. And I left them that way. Now, of course I didn't orchestrate that moment. What the hell do I know? And I don't know what made me say one more moment. And I didn't know what I was going to do. And I had no idea they were going to laugh. I mean, it wasn't conscious. But the instinct, something said, just play that moment. And then I didn't know if I was going any further. But when they laughed, I said, that's the time to quit. So I just said, thank you. And I left. 